This is Husker Sports with Sports Nightly. First, tonight's sports headlines. Good evening, I'm Josh Shilkeman. Men's college basketball action tonight. A couple games in the Big Ten at the half. Northwestern leads Indiana 34-31. to And coming up at 8 o'clock tonight, Illinois is on the road against Wisconsin. Other top 25 action, number 10, Florida State on the road against Wake Forest. FSU up 25-18 to with under nine minutes left in the first half and just about ready to get underway in Ames. Third-ranked Kansas is on the road against Iowa State. At 8 o'clock tonight, number two, Duke on the road against Georgia Tech. Also an 8 o'clock tip between Auburn, ranked number five, and Vanderbilt. And also an 8 o'clock start between seventh-ranked San Diego State facing off with Wyoming. In the NBA tonight, a number of games, including some underway. The Heat on the road against the Pacers. Miami up 58-47, to one minute to go in the first half. The Spurs lead the Celtics 63-44, to under a minute to go before halftime. It's the Mavericks leading the Nuggets 18-14, to five minutes to go in the first quarter. And coming up at 9 o'clock tonight, the Warriors are hosting the Bucks. Live inside the Husker Sports Network studios, I'm Josh Hilkeman. Tonight, it's the Nebraska Basketball Radio Show, right here on the Husker Sports Network. 20 seconds on the possession, Nebraska by three, the drive, by back, weak side, dunk by Cross, another dime, dropped beautifully by Cam Mack in the hands of Kevin Cross. Cross has played magnificently. An inside look at what's going on around Nebraska basketball. Dribbles to the right, gives it off, NBA three, got it! The God of Thunder for the NBA three. Gunnison, 65-61, Nebraska by four. Four is on fire. Tonight, assistant coach Armin Gates. He faces the floor. They'll let Cheatham throw it in. Over the defense to Burke. Burke to the goal. Dunks it. Got it. Under dunk. And an end one. Exclamation point. Pump the brakes. The Huskers are up by... 72 to 66. Sponsored in part by your Midwest Ford Dealers. Visit online at yourmidwestforddealers.com. Now here's your host of the Nebraska Basketball Radio Show, Ben McLaughlin. Thank you and welcome to the Nebraska Men's Basketball Radio Hour. Coach, I'm a superstitious guy. When you play baseball long enough, you kind of just get that way. So you might be kind of hosed the rest of you. It might be you and I the rest of the way. I mean, if, it, if we come off a win like last night, and that's, and that's, if that's what it takes to keep winning, I'll wear it if you'll wear it. I'm with you on that. I'm very superstitious. Anything it takes to get a win, I'm all about it. No doubt. Well, huge win last night. Um, you know, you get to the preparations with Iowa, and, and you obviously start with, with Luca Garza, and you know with the tempo that they like to run with – um, losing Bohannon without question hurt them, and I know Frederick was out too, but where does it start with them? I mean, when you're planning for these guys, and, and they like to get up and down, but they also like to use a big man as much as they do, probably pretty tricky. When you guys started breaking this down, and wh wh what was the message you tried to drive home to these guys of that, what you had to do to win? I mean, if, if anybody saw the game or was at the game, they definitely heard Coach Sadler, Coach Doc Sadler screaming, keep it tight, keep it tight. You know, we wanted to take away their points in the paint. That's what they really uh, hang their hat on. Uh, obviously, feeding Garza, straight in transition, call it point to post. Uh, also, just throughout the throughout the uh, half court sets, they also they always look high low for them. They're always driving, putting pressure on on, on the defense, trying to get in there. Uh, they still ended up with about 52 points in the paint uh, out of their 72 or something like that. But uh, they were definitely trying to pound that thing, and and our guys followed the game plan. It's interesting looking at the box score because. The first line you're going to look at is Garza finishes with 16 and 18. He knew he was going to get his, but he had to work for all 16 of those, and none of them were easy. I think he might have scored eight in a row there uh, late first half, and then after that it was it was tough sledding for him. You take him away and let other guys beat you, find out good things can happen. Oh, 100%. Uh, unfortunately, they do have some couple injuries that definitely, uh, you know, was in our favor so we were able to go underneath a couple ball screens of nine shooters and, and and it really hurt them it helped it helped us keep that uh keep our defense compact and again take away take away garza's you know uh explosive plays that he can make consistently like he went on a run on his own uh towards the end of the first half with six in a row and and one was included in that so we took that away from him and, and frustrated him a little bit and that helped us out 
there are sometimes things happen early in the game, and I said this earlier in the show that you know it might be in the first 30 seconds of the game, but one or two things happen. You go, this might be our night. I mean, we the first three shots of the night are from Wee's camp, and he pretty good looks, and he misses all three of them. I look at Jake, I'm like, hey, <laughs> this might be our night. Guy goes one from ten from downtown. You're not going to apologize for it, but. Uh, you, make other guys beat you, make guys make shots, and sometimes they don't go in. Hey, after those first couple shots, do not go down for you. If you're a shooter or whatever, I don't care what anybody tell you. You you get a little tight, you know. You you start thinking the game a little bit more instead of just, you know, playing freely. And I think that's what happened to those guys yesterday, you know, missing their first couple. Because if you see it go in early, oh, you think it's you think the rim is big as an ocean, you know. But if you miss a couple, it gets as small as a as, as a as a as a ring a ring a finger ring a ring on your finger, you know. So it's uh it definitely helped in our favor that they missed their first couple shots. The, th the thing that, I, that resonated with me the most as a coach you've got to be the most proud of yesterday was just, you know, you look at the box score. Uh, Mate only gave you seven and a half, but everybody else that, that played, played over 10 minutes. And I talked with Jake about this. I talked with Kent about this after the game. And you take any one of those guys out, you don't win the game. I mean, there's, there's a lot of times last year where if James wasn't going or G wasn't going that um, – Somebody else could pick up the slack. You know, Isaiah could pick it up, or JPJ could go get you 30 or whatever it was. And you didn't necessarily need all six or seven guys in the rotation. But you take any of those guys out, you don't win the game yesterday. You know what? Every, every team is different. And, and, and when you figure out this team here, you know, especially with an unselfish guy like Cam Mack, who's one of the top assist guys in the country, if you just run the floor, he'll kick it up to you. You know, uh, he keeps everybody involved. Um, and, and I think we're, we're, we're starting to figure something out. You know, Charlie easily stepped into the lineup and helped us, you know, in a tremendous way. And it seems like when he's on the floor, he makes winning plays. And again, you take those winning plays that he, that he made, take them out, out of the, out of play. We probably don't win that game, you know, cause he got the crowd into it and, and the crowd, it, it, it excites you. That's what, that's what this place, Nebraska, the Nebraska is about. The, the fan base is unbelievable. Um, and, and I just want to thank the fan base again because they make a difference in, in what we do every single night. And I'm sure we frustrate you a little bit, you know, right now because we don't know, you know, what team is going to show up. And, and again, that takes time. And, and, and again, we're looking for that consistency and, and we're going to figure it out. What do you think of Ivan yesterday? I mean, that's not an easy task for a 17-year-old dude to go up against a grown man like, like Garza. How how'd you think he handled himself? Extremely impressed with him. Extremely impressed. What, what, what Ivan does every day, every single day, is not, it's not in the, in, in the, on the stat sheet. Uh, it doesn't show up. But this dude battles. And, and if you go down there and battle with a Luca Garza for three minutes, maybe a minute, you're going to be exhausted. So this dude is a 17-year-old grown man almost, you know, in terms of his body size, his mass. Um, but I'm, I'm, I was very impressed with him because, and, and again, it's hard what he does because he doesn't get to touch the ball every single possession. He, he, he goes and sets screens. He hustles. You know, he tries to take charge and, and, tr and tries to be the, the last line of defense by the, you know, uh, close to the rim and, and def defensively. So what he does is, is unbelievable, and I was very impressed with him and Kevin Cross. Yeah, well, I was just about to go to Kev next because they kind of complement each other pretty well. Kev's probably a little more athletic, got some more bounce and can finish more at the rim, and, you know, you saw some of that late in the game yesterday, sunk a couple free throws that were huge. Um, Kevin's an interesting guy to, to prepare for. And when you look at him, and I know that's probably why this you guys liked him so much, his high school tape, but where is he most effective? Like if, when Kev's at his best, where does he hurt you? Kev, Kev's at his best when he's playing with a motor. Um, you know, when he's just bouncing around, jumping around, making plays, running to set this screen and picking and popping. That's what Kevin does. He, he, he stretches the defense out, out for us uh, in, a, in a huge way. Something that Ivan, and, and it's hard because you got to prepare for Ivan, who's more of a back to the basket guy, and then Kevin subs in. Now you have to change your de whole defensive strategy around. And if you don't, then Kevin will end up with, a, with an open shot every single possession. And again, that's where Kevin helps us out. He'll pick and pop uh, and, and, and you know, hopefully he drains them. Right now he's going through a little slump, and, and that's, he's going to get out of that because he's a shooter and, and he understands that. It was really cool watching him take that, that dish to the basket, flushing that home. But it's a, you're, I hope you're prepared for the next two weeks because Kev's going to let you know every day <laughs> that, that he did that. Uh, but I didn't know he had that much bounce. He got all, you got, you, you're fearless when he went up there. No, exactly, and that's what I'm talking about with his motor, man. He has to keep that thing turned on 
all the time. But uh, in, instead, he'll make a big play, and then he'll want to shut it down for about five minutes of game play. And that hurts. that's when it hurts us a little bit, because then he'll miss a box out or, 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 or not run the floor as hard to put pressure on their defense. Um, so Kevin, once he realizes, and I think it's, he's starting to understand it, and it comes with experience. And I, th I really think he's, he's starting to get it. One of the things that never ceases to amaze me in a college basketball game with this team or any team that you watch, Coach, is when it's a two or three possession game and you make one big play and you think it's over. It's, it's like a football game. You know, you hit that 65-yard post pattern for a touchdown and you think it's over. But in basketball, it's not like that. One play doesn't really – I mean, it gets the crowd excited, may get your team excited, but you got to keep coming. And that's where this – team Nebraska has fallen short not just this year but in recent years is we'll make one or two of those plays and we'll be right there but the other team seems to make one more that wasn't the case last night there was a couple of trips down the floor where um, you know Cam hit back-to-back -back buckets Deshaun hit a three hit a two and back-to-back -back buckets Hanif shot him out of a zone you know you, you come up with tipped balls by Thor and Charlie and it seemed like there were a lot of winning plays made by this team yesterday and ended up going in your favor. How do you preach that to your guys, knowing you may you may make an electrifying play, Hanif, you may hit the Hail Mary to, to get to get to Deshaun and, and dunk the ball, but we miss four free throws, they go back and get a how do you keep that going when they do make you know one or two good ones, but they're still three thirty on the clock? You know what, we just tell them to continue to play for forty minutes. Um these guys know if you just throw yourself out there and, and make and make plays, just just play, just throw yourself out there for the team and sacrifice. And, and again, that's gonna, that's what's holding us back with our consistency right now. Um, it's just playing hard the entire game, you know, because plays are made, uh, the games are won and made, you know. There's a mistake every single possession. So if you play hard and play through it, you can. I can pick up a mistake that 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 you make, and you can pick up a mistake that I make. So it's all about playing hard, getting the crowd involved, and and playing for each other. And that's what coach continues to preach to these guys. It's just been a roller coaster of a year so far. How do you how do you keep them on the on the straight and narrow now? Um, preparing for a bunch of road games here coming up and. And for them to not feel, feel themselves too much um, going to Northwestern, how, how do you handle days like today and the practices to follow? Yeah, so so today was a day off, um, which we which we needed. You know, our guys just when they lay it all out there, man, we we like to reward them, and. Um, so pretty much days coming up, we just got to continue to work and, 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 and prepare for this next team, which we're going to be playing a talented Northwestern team who's, who was up at halftime to Indiana just a couple minutes ago, uh, up three points. So we, have to, we can't take anyone for granted, and we just have to play hard and, and worry about our, us, continue to get better, worry about Nebraska man's basketball. Iowa is a team that stylistically is quite a bit different than Rutgers. You have a bunch of new guys out there that are just figuring this thing out for the first time. How have they handled, Coach, just the, the difference and variation of team styles from game to game? And, you know, you might need to throw in something different like packing the paint against a Garza and, you know, being physical with Northwestern, now go and play Coach Coach Collins in Northwestern. When, when, when you're faced with so many different types of teams, how are these guys handling it? You know what? Uh, early, early I would say we, we weren't very mature about it. And again, that 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 comes with having so many new guys, guys not knowing when they should say something, when they should pick up a teammate or or motivate this guy, and and, and uh, not not accept uh, uh, a lazy defense from that guy, you know. So guys are starting to get comfortable with each other now and being able to take each other's criticism, and I think that's been helping us uh, in a huge way. Um, and and just go, moving forward, I think Hanif Cheatham is doing a great job of of. of taking on that leadership role. So uh, he's doing a good job with it. And, and again, the guys are gelling. So long story short, these guys are starting to gel. And, and, and you guys you, get, you guys can see when we play that way, like a, against a Purdue or um, like we played last night, it shows. It, it was probably challenging. You do, you do the scouts, and I know assistants take turns on it. It probably made that kind of difficult. You know, what, how much do we throw at these guys? You know, you, there, there's, you could get extremely detailed as detailed as you want to be prepping for 30 40 plays if you want but it's about the retention that matters how, how difficult was that as an assistant watching a game film go shoot do we have time to, to talk about this throw this in or not right no you definitely have to you know each game you can't go over everything that another team does well you have to pick their top the top three or four things that you think you can take away and and hopefully take away enough points from their uh, offensive efficiency to you know motive, help our team win that ball game you know and and 
that's part of the game plan, and you, get, you just have to find that one key thing that you can shut down. And again, against Iowa, you saw that with Luca Garza. I mean, he, the kid went for 40 plus against Michigan. So, you know, we figured that he was the key guy, especially with Bohannon out. So, our guys, again, they're starting to pay attention to it, and I think that's a huge part of the game. Well, I, I purposely waited to the end to talk about this guy um, last night, and that's Thor. I remember a conversation you and I had in Italy about this guy and what he could potentially bring to the table. And if you would have told me, you know, we were going to sit here in early January of 2020 and talk about Thor being the, the most important parts of the team, probably would have laughed at you. Uh, but here we are. I mean, this he's everywhere. And and you mentioned things that don't always show up in, show up in the stat column. He leads the country in stats that don't show up in the box <laughs> score. The dude is everywhere. He's he's in passing lanes. He deflects balls. I mean, little the littlest things that affects the game. He has one back cut a game that's worth two points. And, and yesterday – um, the guts to step up and hit those 230 footers when we needed it, the biggest shots he's hit as a Husker. But what is it about him, his love for the game, being a, a, a student of the game and, and coachable that, that, that allows him to do this and take that next step? Well, you, d you definitely don't, don't find a lot of ball players. Uh, or I haven't heard about a lot of ball players from Iceland, and, and he's one of those guys, and I can tell you what. Knowing, knowing that he's from Iceland, I can tell you, anybody that comes from Iceland, I think they'll have a toughness about them. They'll be skilled. They'll be able to shoot that basketball. Uh, they'll, they'll know how to play, so they'll have a high IQ. You know, they'll know when to make a pass off of a pick and roll. They'll know when to shoot an open shot. They'll have a feel for the game. And, and what he does extremely well is follow the scouting report. You know, again, he thinks the game every single possession. He's not the fastest guy. He's not the most athletic guy, but he figures a way out. And that's what it's about, man. And, and he's one of those guys, stats don't hit, what he does does not show up on that stat sheet. And he's a winner. And you saw that at the end of last year when he stepped in and he just, the, the kid was guarding the five man from the opposing team, just didn't care if he got hit in the head, just didn't, was taking charges. So he's in. And very important for this team, and, and, and he doesn't get enough credit, you know, for what he does. And, and again, I'm an advocate for him, and, and I'll do anything for him. You know, I can tell you that right now. We talked a lot about his confidence in that conversation. He's just a different player. What, what is it? What, what clicked for him? Because some guys don't find it. Some yep. guys don't. Will go through four years and never find it. I think Charlie is on the verge of finding his. Yep. And maybe even in the last four minutes, he did find it. But that's a hard thing for a player, and it can make all the difference in the world for him. And he's just a completely different guy now. I said earlier in the show, it, it wouldn't have shocked me if. You know, he saw a lot of his teammates leave and decided, you know, I'm just going to go start somewhere else too. I'm going to go, but he didn't. He stayed here, and a switch just flipped. What, what, what was the moment, if if you remember it or recall, that going, this is a different dude, and this guy's going to help us win games? Yep, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. At the end of last year, it, it definitely. I mean, he showed some stuff, man. He made some big shots. I mean, again, he made huge plays at the end of last year, uh, and it showed his toughness level defending those five men and, and switching defenses, switching to one man, you know, so different possession. He was doing different things. And when you get out there and play and, you, and you're able to showcase some things and you just let yourself go, the basketball gods take over, man, and, and, and good things happen to good people. I'm a huge believer in it, and Thor is one of those guys. And, again, when Coach Hoiberg came in, he saw Thor's ability, and he gave Thor that green light to shoot that ball 100%. And Thor instantly, instantly confidence just grew from that guy. And thankfully it did. Had the green light yesterday and hammered down two threes that – that sealed the game for him. It was one rebound shy of a double-double last night, 17-9 and nine for Thor. Had a couple of steals and an assist. I mean, it was just all over the place for the Huskers. Played almost 36 minutes last night as well. So good game for him as the Huskers win 76-70 to 70 over the Iowa Hawkeyes yesterday. Husker basketball show brought to you by your Midwest Ford dealers. Visit them at buyfordnow.com. You want to be part of the show, 866-HUSKER-1, 866-487-5371. The number to our Benga, game day or any day. Dorothy Lynch, endless player abilities. Can't believe we didn't start, Coach, by wishing you a happy 27th birthday. <laughs> I Happy def birthday. I definitely appreciate it, man. I definitely appreciate it for sure. Uh, just grateful, grateful for it, man. Grateful to be here. You're grateful for it, but I don't know how grateful you really are because you must be low man on the totem pole. If, if they make you come here on your birthday, <laughs> spend it with me. You know what? We, hey, we sent some guys out recruiting, and, and another guy had to, you know, pay his dues at a, at a, at a funeral. So, uh, you know, we're a team, man, and I had to step up and, and, and you know, Get, get the squad situated. I appreciate you wearing one and coming in and talking to me for an hour and, and talking to the state. Well, 
you got Northwestern. They got Indiana on the ropes right now. This, how, how do you take games like this? I mean, this is probably, I mean, it's not probably. None of us expected this to happen at Assembly Hall tonight. And uh, you might be going to, to Chicago and playing a team with a lot of confidence. No question. Uh, everybody knows before I got here, I spent five years with Chris Collins there. So I know what type of guy he is. He's not happy being 5-8 and eight and 0-3 and and in league right now. So he's, I knew he was going to have these guys pumped and ready to go. Um, and, and it's not going to be an easy deal because they're down a, a couple guys. And when that happens, next man up, and he makes those guys that's playing believe and that they always have a chance to win the game as long as they play hard, and that's what they're doing right now. One of the things that one of your former colleagues, Coach Molinari, was known for whenever he had the scout, and I always, I always loved being in the room with one of his scouts. He'd come in with this big <laughs> anecdote. You know, he'd watch Gladiator the night before. He'd have, he'd have some sort of big thing you know, to get the guy's attention before the whole thing started. This might need, not, might all you need to say is say, hey, these guys went to Assembly Hall and beat him. That might be all you need to get their attention. Hey, first of all, I miss Coach Mo. I love him. So, Coach Mo, I'm not, I'm not talking about you on this one, man. I'm laughing at Ben <laughs> right now. But, uh, but yes, no, this, this is definitely easy you know, an easy deal to, to, to sell our guys on is this team, you know, they're, they're, they're fighters, you know, don't look at, don't think they're soft because they're at a, at a place where high academic, where academics is, is, is a high standard there. You know, they, these guys, they, they play the game just like we do. They practice just like we do. And, and they're motivated just like we do, uh, just like we are. So um, they can't, they can't look past this team at all. When you entered the year coach, I mean, I I want, I want to use the word the right way, expectation, not in terms of wins and losses, but when you saw this group of guys, you went through your, your Italy practice, we were overseas with them, you probably knew you know, what you wanted out of these guys in terms of effort, attitude, all the, all the stuff that maybe doesn't relate to show up on the scoreboard. What were you expecting out of these guys you know, when you got to know them and spend some time around them and, and what was going to define a ses successful season for you? You know what? I, I thought I thought I – thought, that these guys would, um, and they're starting to show it, that these guys are fighters and, and, and they, they'll do whatever it takes to win. And um, But it takes time to build trust, and, and I understand that. And that's, that's what it took me a, a little bit to understand why, why aren't these guys, you know, laying it out on the line for each other. And it's just trust, you know, not being with each other for, for a long time and, and, and having 11 new guys. And, and going to Italy, that helped us. but. It really didn't because Cam Mack didn't go, and Ivan wasn't able to attend, and also a call he wasn't able to attend. So uh, the guys that did build a little camaraderie, um, it all changed right away because two starters weren't weren't there. So that was that's a huge huge role in it. Have you had a year like this before? Just with every circumstance, with the team, with your situation, not knowing where you would be, you 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 get on with these with these new guys and. You know, you've only been here. I feel like I just could start to get to know you, and you're one of the guys that have been here the longest in Lincoln. I mean, <laughs> there is so much to this year that I've always said, we're going to remember this year forever, whether the team is winless or undefeated or whatever. This is going to be a memorable year. What's this year been like for you? Oh, man, it's been a whirlwind. I mean, it's everything happened so fast, you know, and um, I, I'm a huge believer that, that things happen for a reason. Um, you know, and I think I was I – was, called to come to Nebraska for a reason, you know, to help to help this program um, uh, achieve what what, the, what 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 needs to be achieved, you know, and, and what what this fan base thrives for, you know, and that's to be atop the the Big Ten and also get to the NCAA tournament and, and win hopefully win a couple games and and and, um, and again the key, key word was build a program, not just have a successful year. Um, it, it, we want to leave. We want to. We want to. When we leave here, we want to have a statue of our of our team. You know that that's a goal of ours. And I think Hoy Berg's the guy that's going to come do it. And with the with the help of of the staff and and also those players have to continue to throw their blood, sweat, and tears all around that gym. It's it's pretty easy to see. You know some of the programs around the Big Ten. Those those some of those staffs are with each other forever. And it's easy to get comfortable. Well, it probably hasn't been overly comfortable for you just the last couple of years, you know, with, with a couple of new staffs in a couple of years. How much have you just grown up as a coach, you know, just being around so many different players and so many different coaches in a new place and everything else? Yeah, you know, I grew I grew a ton as a coach just because I had, I had to adjust to – an existing staff last year and then I had to adjust adjust to a brand new staff here um, right now with you know 
in the same location, but a new staff and, and new players. So it, it it helps you, you know, build build relationships. It helps you. Um, uh, if you ever go through this as a head coach, and, and, and that's what I'm thinking. If I ever get opportunity to uh, be a head coach, I really think I'm, I'm being prepared the right way, and that's what I mean by you know God. God, God doesn't make any mistakes. He, you know, I'm here for a reason. I'm a huge believer in it, and uh, I'm taking it. I'm taking notes every single day. I tell you that right now. Being on the staff with Fred Hoyberg and 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 Doc Sadler and Bobby Lutz, you know, and and, and a recruiter like uh, Matt Abdamasi, you know, um, it's 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 a tremendous opportunity, and and I wouldn't trade it for anything. Whenever I'm talking to you or Matt or anybody anybody else, it's all about well, how's the team gelling together? How are the coaches gelling together? <laughs> Because you, none of you guys have coached together. But, you know, in Italy, as I'm watching you guys as much as I'm watching the game. Absolutely. Who's talking? Who's doing the coaching? Who's sitting back? You know, it's, sure. it's a really interesting dynamic. How has that gone? Hey, man, it is awesome. I tell you, this staff is unbelievable because we are all different. We all bring something different to the table. And, and, and it's crazy because, you know, as former head coaches, those guys make it easy because they know to be successful, you have to demonstrate that the staff can be a, a really good team. So your team can see that. And they know that we are all different, but we're making it work. So if I have an idea, but coach goes with Doc or Bobby's idea, I don't take it personal. And that's the thing our guys, they, they need to realize that, that, hey, if we all win, we all eat. And I think they're starting to understand that. The, the growth of, of a coaching staff and, and, a, and it really just a team in general, you can really start to see it, you know, sometimes pop up in, in, the, in, the, in the box scores and the wins and the validation that you feel. I mean, may, maybe obviously with you assistants, but even more so with Fred, you know, to see, you know, okay, this, this can work. You know, we, we, might not have, we might have three of our best players sitting on the side right now watching in practice, but yeah. we, can, we can still do this. What's the feeling, you know, just at, when you wake up in your bed after a night like last night? Oh, man, it, it, very, very, um, very joyful, to be honest with you. Um, when you go through ups and downs, you, every win that you get, it could be the smallest victory. You, you have to kind of celebrate it a little bit. And so anytime you can win a game in a Big Ten, I'm, I'm, I'm going to celebrate it. I'm going to tell you that right now. I went through the same thing at Northwestern when we first took over. It was tough, you know, and, and we had to go through those losses. And we did that, and, and we grew every single game, and we watched film and got, got better. And that's what we're doing again. Um, and I think my experience going through that th then, it definitely helped me now, you know, just – when I go home, make sure I'm not mistreating my family or, you know, coming back in the next day, not holding grudges against a player that missed a free throw or, or didn't play defense the right way. It's all about get growing together and, and, and how do we get better, you know, and that's, that's what I took from it. 866-HUSKER-1, the number 866-487-5371. You have a question or comment for Coach? About halfway through our program here tonight, a little more than halfway, about 20 minutes left with Coach here tonight. We're back with more after the break. You're listening to Sports Nightly. This is the Hus Help is free, so call today. Back on the Nebraska Men's Basketball Radio Hour, Armand Gates, Nebraska assistant with us here on the show. About a little over 10 minutes left with Coach here on the program. There are some nights that, that just stick out. Last night was one that stuck out. Our, our, our fans don't like that team too much that we just played and you could tell that I mean it, there's not I mean I do all th I've been around all three football baseball basketball and of course when you're at 90,000 it's loud but there's just something about being in an arena when you know you you make the big block you get the big steal or whatever and that place is just going nuts you just live in that moment for like that six seconds you, yeah. are you able to enjoy any of it or are you so focused on we got to get out on that hedge, or we you know, we got two timeouts left. We got to make sure we're getting back on defense. Or do you get to enjoy it at all during the game? So absolutely. So I'm a player's coach, man. So I love to 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 get them going. You know, uh, when they make a big play, to let them know how important that is. Uh, if they're down, to say to let them know it's okay. Let's let's go to the next play. You know what I mean? So I'm one of the coaches that I I, I love to enjoy the moment, but then I get reel myself back in to the moment. You know, going forward. But I do, I do believe you have to celebrate uh, or, or talk about or discuss uh, success and failures uh, in past plays. So just to continue to teach, especially the younger guys that's in the ball games or, or on the bench watching or guys that's going to sub in. So absolutely, I enjoy it, but then I get myself back in a moment. One of the parts to 
finding this rotation. Guys are going to be in and out of the lineup. Guys, are, might, some might get 16 minutes a night, some might get zero. When you're tinkering with things and trying to find out what makes the team click, what do you look for? You know what? You, you just try to find, again, you try to find a, a connection. You know, uh, a, it's a, basketball is a game of runs. So if you can find a group that, that, that clicks really well uh, defensively and then could, 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 it could translate to, a off, to offense, that's what you, you're honestly looking for that. And, and a group that plays hard, man, that's, that's, that's honestly what it what is. That's 90% of the, ball, of the ball game right there, it's just playing hard. We talked a lot about playing at home and how great it is at home. You got a bunch on the road now coming up and not easy places, well, no place is easy. It's never to win, easy to win on the road. Um, from what you've seen with the team, how do they handle that? You know, being in a hotel, getting shoot around, showing up for meals, you know, doing all the things that come with not playing and sleeping in your own bed. You know what? I think our guys handled it, handle, handle it extremely well um, because we do have a curfew and, and we make sure that, that we hang out by the uh, elevators and, and, and front doors to make sure that that those guys are, are you know, uh, abiding by those rules. But we have a really good group, and, and I think that they, they handle it pretty well. 866-HUSKER won the number, 866-487-5371. We're back to wrap it up with Coach after this. Talk some Northwestern after the break. You're listening to Sports Nightly. This is the Husker. Is it a weird going back there wearing wearing scarlet and cream and you know place that you and your family built a home for so long? Hey, you know it is going to be very weird. Uh, you know uh, a lot of staff still there um, that that I was on staff with in those support roles and um, you know obviously sometimes when I go back and recruit I'll, I'll make sure that I get a cup of coffee with you know uh, one of the old ads or something like that. So it's, it's definitely going to be weird, uh, but it'll be my first time in a new arena that they built. Uh, because my last year we played out at Rosemont um, out in, um, at Allstate Arena. What, what, what do you got to do? I mean, you're obvious, the obvious choice for the scout on this one. And, you know, when you watch them play, when you watch Coach Collins, what stands out? And, you know, when you're drilling home to the guys, what do you got to do well? You have to stay locked in defensively because they, they take pride in their execution um, offensively. So uh, defensively, we have to stay locked in and can't have any breakdowns because the moment you break down, they'll get a back cut for a layup uh, or, or get one of their best shooters a, a wide open three. So it's all about no breakdowns and communicating and also uh, taking great shots because they uh, they force you to take long threes with the zone that they play. Um, he likes to switch defenses, so we have to recognize what defense they're in and, and execute our offense. You're able to shoot Iowa out of his own pretty quick. And he hit back-to-back threes there in the first half. Is that is that it? Got to make threes against the zone? Is that all it comes down to? Hey, we're a funny group, man, because we'll one night we'll hit 11 threes, the next night we'll hit two. You know, so definitely, again, seeing that ball go in early, it helps, man. Uh, we, we, need that, we need that basket to look like an ocean for us. I hate, you know, throwing the stereotype on that program because we always do whatever sport we talk about. You know, football, they're not as talented, but they're, they, it's execution. Basketball, we're sitting here talking about the same thing. We say the same thing in baseball. You know, don't sleep on these guys because they'll beat you. They always have a chip on their shoulder. No matter what sport you're playing with, with them, they, they, they always play that way. And, and they make up what they like for in talent, they make up for in, in other areas. What, what do they do well that, you know, frustrate? We were talking about we we're frustrating Iowa. What do they do that f frustrates opponents that you, you got to get your guys to keep your heads? They control the pace of the game. Um, they they don't let you speed them up, and they also they slow you down offensively. And and we we do like to play pretty fast, so that's something where we have to stay patient. And that's why I say take great shots and and sprint back at the on the air time of that shot and play tr good transition defense and then lock in and on their half court half court execution. So that's that's going to be huge. Just the pace of play, staying focused and locked in there. Coach Collins, what kind of guy is he? I mean, obviously, obviously, we've seen him a little bit and been around him, and we know um, he's got a lot of respect around people around this league. But you know, working with him and having that relationship with him, when when you describe him to people, what do you say? I mean, he's a fighter, man. He's a competitor. He, he you know, he's very fiery, you know, and, and his team, and that's what made him a very successful player. You know, he went on and played at Duke. He was a McDonald's All American. So he's got that. He's got the blood, the blood blow, boils in him if if, if his team doesn't. Uh, play the way you know his personality is you know and that's to be that's compete every single possession don't take a day off or a minute off and and you know keep 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 themselves in ball games to try to win them when they, they've had some some players in the past that have i mean i've 
Sanjay Lumpkin was there for 34 years. <laughs> Brian McIntosh had, I think, 12 years of eligibility. I mean, they, they're able to get some guys in there that are around for a long time and, and, and do well. When you look at the personnel this year, what stands out about them? You know what? They they are young, but they but they, they play so hard. They have chips on their shoulders. Uh, they're very talented. But, again, they're a couple babies out there. They have, uh, I believe, two freshmen, two two freshmen playing a ton of minutes you got two sophomores playing a ton of minutes and then you do have a couple grad transfers so they have a good a good sprinkle of everything there but the only thing that's hurting them right now is is their back their backcourt injuries so they're playing a big a bit much bigger lineup than they usually do coming off a big win I mean who knows what there's a minute 57 left in this game right now and I mean both teams are going to come in probably pretty temperamental no matter you know how this one finishes managing emotions we've talked about a little bit already but going into a, a road atmosphere how, how much of the, of the of that lingering feeling is with you you know we, we're talking about it now and I'm sure the guys felt it today you know coming off a win but you know we're still you know over 48 hours away from from tip and and Evanston is it, the last game really mean much when you when you know you're out there for warm ups or is it all just fresh slate? Let's see what happens today. You know what that that's that's it's funny you said that because that's one of uh, Coach Hoyberg's biggest deals is not being too high and not being too low. You know after a big win you can't be too high because you have another game here soon. You can't can't be too low after a loss because you have another game here soon. So that's coming from that NBA uh, life that he that he coached and played in. And again it's 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 the next game up right now and we have to prepare for a very good Northwestern team and, and it's our job as coaches to get our guys prepared and, and understand how tough of a game this is really going to be. Got any idea who's going to win the league this year? <laughs> <laughs> Your guess is as good as mine. I'll tell you that right now. Do you have a crystal ball and we both, we, we can find out right now. Have you seen anything like this before? I mean, this is, just, I mean, you look at up and down the league, just how crazy it is this year. And, you know, we're, we were just talking about it off air. You know, every single night, it's just like flip a coin. You never, you never know what you're going to see in this league. Hey, there's no doubt about it. Uh, again, I'm, I'm, I'm probably a little biased, but I think the Big Ten is the best league in the country. Uh, if not, it's definitely top two. But um, any given night, man, all across the country, you can lose a ball game if you if you if you don't respect your opponent, and that's huge. That's a huge thing that we talk about with the guys. Respect your opponent, no matter if it's uh, a Division three school or 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 the number one team in the country. You have to come out and play and and and, and put yourself in position to win a ball game. Yeah, four hours left of your birthday. You're gonna go do anything fun after this, or you're gonna shut her down. Uh, you know what is never shutting it down is it, you know uh, <laughs> yeah, when you're like, a coach. Do you ever shut it down? No, when you coach, you never shut it down. My mind is always moving, and I'm gonna be locked in on this Northwestern film when I get home. And your and your children are probably gonna be jumping all over you and wanting wanting some cake and ice cream. One hundred percent. So ice cream and and cake when I get home, and and then they'll definitely shut it down. Coach, I really appreciate you coming in, man. Thanks so much. Thank you so much for having me. Appreciate it. Coach Armand Gates with us, Nebraska Men's Basketball Radio Hour. Thanks to everybody for tuning in. Huskers, big win last night against Iowa. Turn their attention to Northwestern. Quick score update there. A minute 20 left. IU up four as that one winds down in Bloomington. 866 Husker won the number. Calls and guests join us on our Woodhouse Auto Family hotline. And also want to thank our friends at 811. Go dig red before you dig. Always click or call to have your utility lines marked. It's free. It's easy. It's the law. we got third and final hour of Sports Nightly coming up next.